Hello everyone! Hi guys! So we are today with... Lawrence Blair! Lawrence Blair! Thank you so much yes, Lawrence for visiting us. I think we're gonna start with Anne because yeah. she's, she's written quite a, a, I have a little some little questions. Something prepared. Yeah. So who, who are you and, and what, what do you do? So if you could explain a little bit about... Well I am a totally life. irresponsible person who's incredibly inquisitive about the wonders of the world. My parents were, took us to Mexico, emigrated to Mexico when I was a teenager, and there I discovered jungles and wild animals and ancient cultures. So when I eventually made it to Indonesia, quite young, during the year of living dangerously when they were murdering each other, I still discovered Indonesia was the equivalent to Mexico multiplied by 150. So I'm trained in anthropology, particularly my field is psychoanthropology, which deals with the range of the human mind. And for many years, my late younger brother, Lorne Blair and I, were data gathering for psychoanthropology, which means trying to track down and live with tribal peoples who ideally had not been contacted by their own governments or by missionaries. And, and the reasoning behind that is that to... To capture their way of life, yeah. their beliefs on film before they're forever gone alternatives to orthodox ways, alternatives to the way the rest of the world lives. So they were like a rare fish that are in an aquarium that is, or a pool that is shrinking, and you want to capture their way of life. And I find now that, of course, much of the film that we took is absolutely historical. Yes. And the film was subsequently picked up by BBC and PBS in America, and ABC in Australia, and it came out as a series called Ring of Fire. And it's as much an adventure of self-discovery by finding out what do these people believe, their alternatives, all ancient alternatives to birth, death, sex, mysticism, environmental wisdom as to what all the, the, the plants do for people. So the series, um, for, for those people that haven't come across it before, the series called The Ring of Fire, and um, it, like how many episodes and could you like five episodes co-produced by Ringo Starr did he uh, fund it or? he funded some of it okay. he's one of the investors and the very you... first films including Spice Island Saga where we sail with the piratical boogies tribe <laughs> for, for a couple of so thousand amazing. miles yes we've seen this footage and like how wow. you even manage to one film and two stay alive uh, like I mean, that, that takes, yeah. that takes a, a lot of conviction. Well, those of were the days <laughs> when, you, when there were only two of us, you see, there were just two of us. Mind you, we had a quarter of a ton of equipment. It was 16 millimeter film. So you needed a generator to charge your cameras and your batteries. And um, you didn't always, uh, not all your film necessarily survived because you were in very hot and humid conditions. In fact, but enough of it survived that made us very famous for a brief period in time, before How's most of your watchers were born, probably. Yeah, we're, f we're filming on a, an iPhone at the moment, so the difference in the amount of equipment yeah. that you're carrying is, is probably yeah. you know, phenomenal. So, um, with the, the footage, did, did you film every day, or was it just... No, because you only have X amount of film with you, and you had to be very careful not to overshoot, because you wouldn't have any more stock left. So obviously we missed some amazing events and happenings because we felt we needed to hold on to that film because we needed another link or another st story point yes. in our film. So you had to husband your film very carefully. And mean? sometimes we didn't shoot for weeks and weeks and weeks until what we had come for happened. Mm -hmm. Like an amazing festival, say, riding horses where the people tried to murder each other from horseback. Duration did you film over? How many years did you film over? The series was made over 10 years of film. So it was taken from the best of 10 years. And it came out, first of all, as a four part series, four one hours. And then subsequently, when I lost my brother here, we were already planning to take some of our tribe, crazy friends from the past, out to visit these wild places 
including Mick Jagger and Jerry Hall, but my brother very inconveniently and inconsiderately died just beforehand. And so we went ahead anyway, and that forms the fifth of the film series. And it's a sort of goodbye to him too, and a, a sort of peon to him, and to tip the hat at the amazing stuff he did, because uh, when I say it was two of us, he was definitely, he was the, ca he, was the he was the director of the film series, he was the cameraman. He was the filmmaker. I was just the bullshit artist. <laughs> and a very good bullshit Thank artist you. at that. <laughs> um, do, do you want to ask them? Uh, look, Mia, I just remember on the video when uh, you were with the Boogie Pirates and you were looking for, um, you were waiting for bigger wind to come to be able to yes. go faster and find the di your direction. And you had this dream during the night. First of all, what brought us to Indonesia was a meditational group. The guru happened to be based in Java, and this was before it was trendy and not many people. For instance, the Beatles hadn't yet followed Maharishi, Maharishi Yogi. Uh, but by being involved in an, uh, a meditational way and then coming to Indonesia, one got quite into uh, dreams and consciousness in dreams and being aware of the invisible worlds. And indeed, when we took off on this sailing boat with 16 of the tribal peoples called the bogies, who give the word bogeyman to the English language. Uh, we were given by the owner of the prow, who didn't come along the prow as the boat. Uh, my brother was given a traditional bogies dagger to protect himself, and I was given a model of the boat. And I was told as soon as long as the model remained intact, so would the boat. And um, I rather, we got becalmed, we could not, there was no wind for days and days, and it was very urgent that we found our way to the next island before the season died. And I had this dream, and that was because the model boat had been put down in the hold, facing backwards, it should be facing forwards. There was nothing else to film, nothing else going on, so we filmed the mic putting, following my dream, which was putting the prow around the other way. And I tell you, within an hour or so, we began getting really strong wind such wind that we had a terrible storm for days, which is also in the film, and the, the boat nearly sank in the process. So I'm not fooling around with those things anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, you need, you need to watch this uh, series. They're absolutely amazing. Ring of fire. Unbelievable what you've been doing and this experience. And, and you're with us sharing it now. It's yep. even more beautiful, you yeah, know? Exactly. Um, because, I mean, in those were the days when you, you were out of touch with your producers for up to 11 months at a time. You couldn't come back until you had filmed what you promised you were going to film. Uh, so it meant that you really could sink into the situation. Yeah. I mean, in a way, you have that only now with wildlife cameramen. These wonderful films made by David Attenborough where you see these yeah. spectacular photographs of creatures. That's because there are cameramen who stay there for months and months and months. And uh, so in one sense, uh, what we were doing, it might be referred to as the first reality TV uh, because uh, we filmed what was actually happening. And sometimes in the case of tribal rituals, we had to wait for months and months for them to happen. Mm. So it was an exciting time and it helped to bring, it helped open up Indonesia to the outside world, which is something I am have ambiguous feelings about because apparently we doubled Garuda Airlines traffic over a two-year period, the film series Ring of Fire did, because it was shown in 60 countries, and so it exposed Indonesia in a very big way. Uh, it's wonders to the world. This is the thing, isn't yeah, it? You know, is that yeah. The world It's changing whether we like it or not. And we just mm -hmm. have to find a way to fit yeah. and mold into it. Yeah.